Hey, so I've just finished recording the uh, webinar on getting COVID data from uh, Public Health England's REST API uh, using Alteryx. Now, in that webinar, I came across uh, a couple of errors in my Alteryx workflow. And one thing I always hate when people hit errors in demonstrations, and unfortunately time constraints um, absolutely are, are always the issue, um, but it's that you don't get to see the person solve it. So I thought, you know what? I'm, I haven't looked at the, since I've just finished the webinar. I haven't looked at the workflow. I don't know how I'm gonna solve this. Um, I'm just gonna take a look at some things. And I thought I would record live, um, just trying to solve this issue because, you know, maybe someone will get some use out of how I've debugged it. And then if you come across the same issue, you might want to, to do the same tips. So let's, let's, let's go back to the workflow. Um, so this is where I left it off. The uh, yeah, this is the the one I borrowed that I'd made earlier, which I couldn't connect. So it didn't have the right fields. So that's you go back to the one I created live. It's called demo macro, uh, and when I run it, it's uh, it's giving me this error telling me that uh, tool number eleven has no valid fields. So let's uh, just open it up now. Tool 11, I searched during the webinar and found that, that it's this, this select tool. Um, basically, it's, it's essentially telling me that no records are flowing through this top half. Um, that's why the select is giving me an error. So there must be something wrong with, uh, with the uh, URL that's going from the output back into the input as part of that iterative flow. Uh, if we hit it once, it runs, uh, oh, it doesn't actually run just fine. So here we do have an error coming through. Um, let's see what's going through here. So yeah, okay, this does look like there's a lot of extra characters in here, which I don't like the look of. So um, I'm gonna go back to this one and Maybe this will be a bit cleaner. So this is what's coming in. Well, you see, yeah, this isn't clean at all. So perhaps um, a structure here does have a lot of stuff in. So let's just clean it up a touch. Get rid of all this white space. I'm sure there's a bit of regex you could run on this to just clean this up. Um, okay, so still getting the error, um, but that looks a little cleaner and actually a little closer to uh, to what was coming out, what, what we were originally working with. So uh, let's use that copy with headers and delete all, paste that in. So the first time it runs, again, it's coming through. Uh, Precondition failed. The query is either empty or does not contain the correct pattern. Correct pattern. Okay. All right. Let's uh, so filters equals area. Type region and structure equals sensor date. So it looks like this error is specifically on how this is um, being built, this bit here. Yeah, I wonder if it's even just like the new lines in this, because those are some extra characters. Just get rid of those. Oh, we have a little bit of a result. There is something coming through there. So yeah, that looks exactly like what's in the examples. Okay. Let's delete all, paste. Oh, I accidentally pasted everything. It's all right, we only need to get URL. It's not encoding, that's good. Let's run it and we do get data through. Okay, so the first page works just fine, but we're still getting an error. 
So on the second page. So if I do a browse there, let's run it. Okay. Uh, copy. And now what we can do to sort of simulate the second run is put the next page URL in to the start, run it through and see what error we get. 404 not found. That's interesting. Aha, there it is. So in this URL here, I don't know if you'll be able to uh, see, <coughs> excuse me, um, is it says API coronavirus.gov.uk slash v1 slash data slash v1 slash data. So this is a really basic error that um, I didn't pay close enough attention to the, the paging URL that comes through. And uh, I went and added this on to the end of it when it doesn't need to be there. So if we ditch that, now run it. Uh, oh, yeah, because the, the second page came out wrong. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to be bold. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to here and see if I just run it, because that maybe should fix everything. It does! Well, hey. So, we were getting two and a half thousand records through because uh, it was only doing one page and then it was erroring. Now we're getting uh, 3,300, so that paging's working just fine. So yeah, essentially it was just, you know, human error, of course, um, that, that came down to uh, I hadn't put the the correct base URL in there. Uh, I wasn't paying close enough attention in the live webinar. And so, you know, silly mistake. I've made it before. I'll make it again, I'm sure. Um, so hopefully uh, that gives you an idea of, of how you can um, uh, how you can debug an iterative uh, macro. They are difficult. They do take time to get used to, um, and and really it is just a case of going through and saying right, what's happening in paid in the first time it runs? Can I get that working? Yes, good. Right now, go back to that the the iterative the input change some variables in there and say, right, can I simulate uh, iteration two running? Set the variables, make it run, does it work? Three, four, until you think you're getting an error. Um, there, is also, there is also one other trick that, that I'll quickly show. Um, and that is, if you want, as this is iterating through, obviously it's difficult to see uh, how these variables are changing and what impact they're having on subsequent pages. You know the first page that happens, but getting it from subsequent pages is quite difficult. Um, one other trick you can do is to use the messaging tool. So if you drop the messaging tool in at the start and say, right, I want to, let's make this a high priority message so it does come through, um, and I want to know what the get URL is each time, okay? So if I save that, again, come back to here, and run it, what we'll see is in the messaging down here, each time it calls a URL, it, oops, it gives me uh, a message showing me the URL that's coming through. And I could use that to, to help debug as well. All right, so, so that's another great trick to, for debugging an iterative workflow. Um, I hope that helps. And uh, for everyone on the call, uh, thank you for bearing with me while I tried to solve a couple of errors that I didn't. Hopefully this uh, gives you, uh, lets you see what went wrong and uh, so you don't make the same mistake. All right, thanks a lot. Bye now.